Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a live broadcast of WBFR, Playhouse of the Air. We thank you for braving the weather this Christmas Eve, and you'll be glad you did when you hear the story we have for you tonight. It's a wonderful life! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, this evening's program is being broadcast live from coast to coast, and our listeners are counting on your reactions as a part of their listening pleasure. So don't be shy, and feel free to applaud, laugh, swoon, or cry just as loudly as the spirit moves. I'm getting the signal from our stage manager that will be going live on the air in just less than three minutes, which allows me just enough time to introduce you to the fine acting ensemble who will be performing this evening's entertainment. You know him from Jack Carter, Boy Detective, and Cowpoke Romance, playing George Bailey, the hero of tonight's story, Mr. Jake Lawrence! <laughs> having just returned from Los Angeles, having completed filming Donnie Goes Bananas, a technical <laughs> spectacle, as his leading lady, Mary Hatch, Miss Ohio 1943, Miss Sally Applewhite! WBFR Playhouse listeners have heard our next little lady in roles ranging from Mother Cabrini to Salome. And playing small town siren by the big and others in this evening's story, Miss Lana Sherwood! <laughs> Soon to be seen co starring with Margaret Dumont in Paramount Pictures' new comedy, The Heck Chick, and playing Clarence the Angel and others in this evening's show, here's Mr. Harry Jasper! You know them, you love them, the WBFR Playhouse regulars. <laughs> Sydney Green Street! Yeah. Yeah. Elliot Obler! Females are fabulous. <laughs> and here with you every week on WBFR, I'm Freddie Fillmore. <laughs> I'm getting the signal from our stage manager that will be on the air in 20 seconds. Thank you all for coming this evening and enjoy the broadcast. We like five, four, three, two. <laughs> Playhouse of the Air. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, young and old, old and new. Greetings and welcome from WBFR Studio A in Manhattan, New York, right here in the U.S. of A. I'm your host, Freddie Fillmore, and it's my pleasure to bring you your favorite stories this and every week on WBFR Playhouse of the Air. Tonight we bring you a real feel-good heart moment, perfect for this or any Christmas Eve. It's a wonderful life. We begin our story in the little town of Bedford Falls, New York, U.S. of A., where a number of people in the town are praying for their dear friend, a typical American dreamer named George Bailey. Dear God, please look over my husband, George. George is a good boy, you know that? My son always goes out of his way to give others a helping hand. Now it's him who needs the help. Call my big brother George. He's done so much for all of us. More for me than I remember all the times he'd stay late after work and not ask a cent. The world needs more like George, George Bailey. Bailey never thinks about himself. I wouldn't have a roof over my head if it wasn't if for it him. If it wasn't for him, I would have given up a long time ago. I'll never think about as myself. I must have taken the last cent. He, he had no sense of business, that George Bailey. Just like his father. None of the Baileys were ever businessmen. It's his own fault if he wasn't prepared for times, times like, like these. these. I can't help but think it's all my fault. Help him, Father. It's me who's putting him through this. Something's the matter with Daddy. Should we pray for him, Mommy? Yes, Suzu, pray. Pray very hard. The voices carry heavenward, and Joseph, the superintendent of angels, summons Clarence, an apprentice angel. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Clarence. A man down on Earth needs our help. Splendid! Is he sick? Oh, worse. He's discouraged. 
At exactly 10.45 p.m. Earth time, that man is seriously thinking about throwing away God's greatest gift. Oh dear, dear, his life? Well then I've only an hour to dress. But what are they wearing now? You will spend that hour getting acquainted with George Bailey. Sir, if I should accomplish this mission, I mean, might I perhaps win my wings? I've been waiting over 200 years now, and people are beginning to talk. <laughs> What's that book you've got there? Uh, the Adventures of Tom Sawyer, sir. I was reading it when you sent for me. Oh, fine book. Excellent. Well, you do a good job with George Bailey, and we'll see about those wings. Thank you. Thank you. Now, if you're going to help out George, you're going to need to know a little something about him. Look. See the town? He had a why, yes, a group of young boys sledding down a snow-covered hill and onto the ice. This is amazing! Yippee! Who's that? That's your problem, George Bailey. A boy? That's him when he was 12 back in 1919. Something happens here you'll have to remember for later on. And here comes the scare baby, my kid brother, Harry Bailey. I'm not scared. Come on, Harry. George has had a bad ear ever since. All that icy water, you understand? Bad ear, yes, sir. The other event happened a few months later. George took an after-school job at Old Man Gower's drugstore. Hey, it's me, Mr. Gower, George Bailey. You're late. Yes, sir. Hello, George. Hello, Mary. Hello, Violet. <laughs> Did two cents worth of shoelaces, Violet? Mary was here first. I'm still thinking. Shoelaces? Please, Georgie. Okay. I like him. You like every boy. What's wrong with that? Here you go. Thanks, Georgie. See you later, Mary. Make up your mind yet, Mary? I'll take chocolate. With coconuts? I don't like coconuts. Say, bring this. You don't like coconuts. Don't you know where coconuts come from? From Tahiti, the Fiji Islands, the Coral Sea. What's that you've got there? A new magazine? I never saw it before. Of course you never. Only us explorers get it. I've been nominated for membership into the National Geographic Society. Let me get your ice cream. Is this the ear you can't hear on? George Bailey, I'll love you till the day I die. Here you go. I'm going out exploring someday, and I'm going to have, I don't know, a couple of harems and maybe three or four wives. We'll wait and see. George. George! Yes, sir? You're not paid to be a canary. Yes, sir. Bye, George. Oh, oh, oh. I'm here. What was that piece of paper George just picked up? It's a telegram from Mr. Gower. He found out this morning that his son died of influenza. Oh, awful. Yes, and he spent the afternoon drowning his grief in whiskey. Uh, Mr. Gower, do you want something? A anything? No. Is there anything I can do back here? No. Oh, I'll get them, sir. Oh, Mr. Gower... What's this bottle? Uh, never mind that. Just get those capsules over to Mrs. Blaine's. Oh, uh, uh, yes, sir. They have the diphtheria, though, haven't they, sir? Um... Is there a charge, sir? Yes, charge. It's just that Mr. Gower... Just get going. Mr. Gower, I think... What is it? It's just that this bottle you use, sir, I think you, I think you put something wrong in those capsules. Who do you think you're talking to? Ah! Oh, sir, you're hurting my sore ear! Did you hear what I said? Get out of here! Oh, please, sir, stop! Sir, I know you got that telegram, and you're upset. It's just, it's, sir, it's not your fault. It's just that that bottle that you used, sir, the, the, the bottle that you used to make up the capsules, it, it's poison. Poison? Sir, I just, I, I, I don't, it's not your fault. Please don't hit my sore ear again, please. Poison, I, George, I, George. Sir, I think it's not your fault. It's just, sir, you didn't know what you were doing, and it's just, I promise I'll never tell a soul. I hope to die, I won't. George. Did he ever tell anyone about those pills? Not a soul. Did he ever marry the girl? Did he ever go exploring? Well, we'll get there soon enough, Clarence. When George Bailey grew up, he wanted to go away to college, but there just wasn't enough money. So he worked four years in the Building and Loan Association. Building and Loan Association? George's father was in the Building and Loan business, along with George's Uncle Billy. George? 
What's the combination to the safe? <laughs> we wrote it down so you wouldn't forget. Well, that's right. Where? In your wallet, Uncle Billy. <laughs> Thanks. Lovable fellow, just forgetful is all. Now, who's that? That's Henry F. Potter, the meanest and richest man in all the county. Peter, Potter's here. Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Bailey. There's nothing quite so loathsome as a family business. Now, Peter, you know what I'm here for? I'm on a very tight schedule, a family to evict in three. Okay, then, Mr. Potter, here's the thing. I just need a little more time, just 30 short days. I'll dig up that 5,000 somehow. Have you put any real pressure on those people of yours to pay their mortgages? Well, times are hard, Mr. Potter. A lot of people are at work. Then foreclose. I can't do that. These families have children. They're not my children. But they're somebody's children, Mr. Potter. Are you running a business or a charity ward? Well, all right. Not with my money. Mr. Potter, what makes you such a hard scored character? You have no family, no children. You can't begin to spend all the money you've got. So I suppose I should give it to miserable failures like you and that idiot brother of yours to spend for me, eh? Well, he's not a failure. You can't say that about my father. George! Well, you're, you're not, Pop. You're, you're the biggest man in town. All right, son. Thanks. I'll, I'll talk to you tonight. Just don't let him say that about tonight. you. Tonight! What kind of business are you running here? Good God, man! George worked for his father, saving enough to see him through university. That summer, though, he was going to Europe. George got a job on a cattle boat and wanted to do a little traveling before college. Old man Gower surprised him with the gift of a great big suitcase. On his way home from the store, he ran into his two friends, Ernie the cab driver and Bert the cop. <laughs> hey, Ernie. Hiya, George. Hey, Bert. Hey, George. What's the suitcase for? Oh, I'm a rich tourist today. How about driving me home in style? Sure, your highness. Hop in the cab. And for the carriage train, I'll put on my head. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Bailey. Looks like you're ready to get out of here. <laughs> Hello, Violet. Say, uh, you look good. It's some dress you got on there. Oh, this old thing. Why, I only wear it when I don't care how I look. <laughs> See you later. Hey, how would you like Want to come along, Bert? We'll show you the town. Yeah, no thanks. Think I'll go home and see what the wife's doing. Family man! <laughs> George saved up enough money for college. His bags were packed and he was all set to go. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, Pop. Like, I can't believe it's the last night in the Bailey boarding house. <laughs> We're sure gonna miss you, George. Oh, I'm gonna miss you too. Say, Pop, what's wrong? You, you look tired. Oh, I had another tussle with old Henry Potter today. <sighs> I thought when we put him on the board of directors, he'd use up on us. Oh, I wonder what's eating that old money grubbing buzzard anyway. Oh, he's a sick man. Frustrated and sick. Sick in his mind. Sick in his soul, if he's got one. Hates everybody that has anything he can't have. Hates us mostly, I guess. Hey, George, can I borrow your tuxedo studs? Yeah, Harry, help yourself. Well, where are they? Oh, your suitcase. I'm not taking a tuxedo on a cattle boat, Harry. Right, right. Say, where did you get such a fine piece of luggage anyway? Oh, Mr. Gower, a little going away present. Pretty soon you're gonna see that bag all covered in travel labels, Italy, Baghdad. Oh, you should come to the dance tonight. Oh, I'd be bored to death. Well, you couldn't want a better debt. Lots of pretty girls. Oh, hey, I gotta hurry. I wish we could send Harry to college with you, George. Ah, oh, Pop, we got that all figured out. Harry'll stay, he'll work here for four years, and then, and then he'll go. He's a little, little young for that job. Well, no younger than I was, Pop. You were born, older George. Suppose you've decided what you're going to do when you get out of college. Uh, same thing I always talked about. You know, design buildings, you know, plan modern cities. Still after that first million before you're 30? Well, I'll settle for the first half in cash. <laughs> of course, it's just a hope, but you wouldn't consider coming back to the building alone, would you? Uh, I know it's early to talk about it. Oh, oh Pop. I couldn't face being cooped up in that shabby little office for the rest of my life. It's... Oh, hey. Yeah, I didn't mean that remark. It's, it's just, just that this whole business of nickels and dimes and spending your whole life trying to save three cents on the length of a pipe, I'd go crazy. Uh, Pop, I want to do something big, you know, something important. You know something, son? I feel that in a small way that we are doing something important. Satisfying a fundamental urge. It's not too much for a man to want his own roof and walls and fireplace and we're helping him get those things in our shabby little office. Pop, you know, I've been, I've been hoarding pennies like a miser just in order, you know, most of my friends already finished college now. If I don't get out now, I'm just gonna bust. Yes, yes, you're right, boy. 
This town's no place to live if you aren't willing to crawl the pot. Get yourself an education and then get out of there. Well, thanks, man. I'm glad to see it that way. You know, I'm gonna go down on Old Main Street. Last night in town and all. Have a good time, son. Who's that? Why, that's Violet Nick. There's a little girl from the candy counter. That's right. Hello, Georgie Porgy. Hello, Violet. What gives? Nothing. Where are you going? Oh, probably end up at the library. Oh, Georgie. Don't you ever get tired of just reading about things? Yes. <laughs> what are you doing tonight? Uh, not a thing. Well, what do you say, Vi? You game? You want to make a night of it? Oh, I'd love to. What do we do? Why don't we just go take off our shoes, go walk out on the grass and bend our bare feet? Huh? But then we can go up Stewart Lake. It's beautiful up there in the moonlight. And uh, we can swim. Then we can climb Mount Bedford and smell the pines and just uh, watch the sunrise against the peaks and we can stay up there the whole night and it'll be a terrific scandal. Everybody will be talking. George, have you gone crazy? Walk in the grass in my bare feet? Why, it's 10 miles up there to Mount Bedford. You think just because you... Oh! <laughs> okay. Forget about the whole thing. Forget about what, George? Nothing, Sam. You remember Mary, don't you? Hi, George. Hi, Mary. Say, you wouldn't mind walking Mary home, would you? Well, no. I mean, is that okay with you, Mary? Fine by me. Great, thanks. <laughs> so, George walked Mary home. Is that important, Joseph? I'd say it is, because even though Mary lived only four blocks away, it took them almost two hours to get there. <laughs> Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? Come out tonight. Come out tonight. A Buffalo gals, won't you come out tonight? And dance by the light of the moon. <laughs> Hot dog! Gee whiz, that was just like an organ. Beautiful. <laughs> But gee, Mary, you know, if it wasn't me talking, I'd say you're about the prettiest girl in town. Well, why don't you say it? Well, I don't know. Maybe I will. I, maybe I will. How old are you, anyway? Eighteen. Eighteen? Too young or too old? Well, well no, just right. Your age fits you. <laughs> hey, look where we are! <laughs> oh, it's the old grandma. 